I have an iPhone 6s here with uh, needs data recovery, uh, water damaged. I'm gonna kind of go over what I normally do when I first get a board in for data recovery, and uh, data recovery is uh, pretty. It's a pretty time-consuming thing, and I would say success rate is not great <laughs> on these things. I don't know about other people, but I would probably say less than 50%. Um, and uh, you know, if it's if it is recoverable, it's usually something like you know a backlight issue or maybe a shorted, a known shorted cap or something like that. You know, I mean, and then uh, you know phones that have been fully submerged in water. I mean, those are even harder, I think. You know, to recover the data on. So, so anyway, so let me just uh, uh I don't know, I'm just mucking around right now, but I'm gonna take this phone off here, and I don't think there's any. Cor Actually, there's a little bit of corrosion. See the little corrosion up there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a little bit of corrosion on there, and that's that looks like that is the camera LDO. So that is not going to be required. So that's not going to be required to boot. Um, so I mean, we can technically we can just start removing components. You know that that looks like they're kind of messed up. That way we can take those out of the equation. Um, there's a handful of chips that are required to boot and, and for iTunes to access it, and we will make sure we try to leave those on or put them back. But we really just initially, you really just want to identify the corrosion, you know, and kind of paint a picture of of what happened, you know, where the water went and what kind of damage it caused, you know. So let me do, let me just get this crappy foam off first, and then that way I can get the whole picture, you know. That way I don't have to, because a lot of times I'll I'll see something, and, I, and then I'll try to fix it, and then, you know, I don't desolder or shield or something like that, being lazy, and then uh, you spend an hour where, if I were to just desolder the shield initially, then, uh, you know, the, the problem would have been evident, you know. So desolder all the shields, remove the foam. This is a success. Get this foam off my fingers. Okay, so let's just go over the board and let's just take a close look at the board, okay? And then we can kind of go over the problem areas, and I'll kind of give you ideas on what to look for. My stupid camera here is, doesn't really. I'm waiting for a new head head holder, the thing that goes up and down. This is my second one. And it is just the shittiest thing ever. See that? It doesn't even hold anymore. Okay, so let's just do this. Yeah, screw it. Okay, so let's look at the corrosion, alright? A little bit of corrosion there. Corrosion, definitely corrosion under here. Uh, corrosion all over this connector here. Thankfully, we don't really need any of these. So we can actually remove them. Lots of corrosion here. And here, so this is this is the home button. Uh, we don't really need that either. Um, so, okay, so I think probably just remove, start removing stuff. You know that this, maybe this. We can check for shorts. This looks like there's some, actually something, a piece of solder in there or something. Yeah, it looks like there's something in there. I mean, this this really could cause a boot loop too. This little piece of fleck of of uh, solder that's in there. I mean, that could very well cause a boot loop. And that's what it's doing. It went to 0.43 and then it just quit. So let me just look for my little, this thing right here. You can get a pin too. I'm just going to pick this out. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, there's a little bit of corrosion on the pins, but this doesn't look too bad. Uh, little corrosion here so I might just remove this this chip right here definitely gonna remove that and probably I'll probably remove this too and clean it up and then everything else looks okay um, so let's just keep moving down here it looks like this is the backlight right here backlight cap and that looks a little bit corroded so maybe I'll check for shorts on there someone's already removed the diode I, I think I don't know what happened to the diode it's weird 
I mean, it doesn't look like anybody's touched it, but it's definitely blown a bit somewhere. Uh, a little bit of corrosion on the side here, but these are just coils. They shouldn't, they should be okay. Uh, scroll down. That's nothing. Doesn't look bad at all. And that's really about it. I don't really see anything else that's kind of strange on this side. I don't see anything that's too bad on this side. So let's go over here and start from the top. Uh, definitely some corrosion under chestnut. Definitely some corrosion under chestnut, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this this was causing the the bulk of the problems. The NAN looks clean. Um, oh, this looks clean. This is Tigris. So let's okay. So let's let's check for a uh, short on VCC main. That's the first thing. And we'll just kind of probe around uh, Tigris a little bit. Tigris is the incoming power supply, and, and it it actually provides the charging for the iPhone. So uh, let's see. I think this is USB 5 volts. It's not shorted. VCC main. Not shorted. It's a good sign. Uh, and I think this is the battery voltage. That's not shorted. Okay. So I think one of the, maybe one of these are battery as well. And I don't see any of the any short on. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Okay. We're good. So I don't see any shorts on any of the main power lines, which is good. And there's no corrosion down there, so. Uh, so I think I think what I'm gonna do is definitely remove chestnut, clean that up. I, I'm not really I'm not really concerned with these caps here because what is this? Is that filter? Oh, see that's shorted right there, but shorted, shorted. Let's see what these are. These may be low, low resistance lines, so let's just double check on them real quick. So, let's see. This is okay. So, these are actually important lines here. Um, this is PP5E7 LCM. And, uh, let's see, SOC. This may be a low resistance line, I'm not sure. But I know this one's not supposed to be. And,. Okay, so let's double check again. Make sure we're probing the right things. Okay, so there's definitely a short on chestnut. My guess is that it's probably not the cap that's shorted. It's probably under here that's shorted because they can kind of see it. Okay, so we're gonna definitely remove chestnut, and then uh, up here, let's just kind of probe a little bit. Let's let's probe the backlight system a little bit, and um, so so I don't know. You guys can't even see it, can you? Right, so I'm basically just probe, probing the anode line of the of the um, backlight system, and then these are the cathode lines right here, and then let's see. Uh, I don't know what the okay. So I think. I think maybe this right here is the incoming voltage for this is a filter for the camera. So let's just see if that's not shorted. So I'm not really concerned with this right now. Um, I'm pretty sure that's pretty sure that's this camera LDO and and the camera filter. So let's just double check though. So this is VCC main incoming and then. 8.5 volts, okay. So let's just double check this. Let's just double check this. And, and, and the one, I don't know what that is. Where does that even connect to? I don't know. Alright, so let's just check this one right here. So, so let's just make sure this is not, otherwise I just, I just won't remove it. So this is shorted too. 
So th these will something is shorted under there, I believe. Well, you know what? It's not shorted now. Oh, there we go. Weird. Are these filters? Let's double check. No, these are caps. So this is a bad cap right here. I mean. So this is not beeping anymore, but I'll probably remove it. I'll probably just remove it all. Okay, so I think we have our plan of attack now. We have shorts on chestnut and shorts under the camera, which we, we already knew because we visualized it. We you know we were able to see it. So let's let's start with the rear camera area and then we will uh go from there, okay? And again, on the ammeter it's just going from like point it's like point four three. I saw point four three once and then it just stopped, so so sick of this camera head here. Why can't they just make one of these things that work? Okay. Alright, I might not be able to move it again past this point. Okay, so let's do it. So we don't need the rear camera to recover data, so I'm just going to get rid of it. And I don't really care about this connector either. As a matter of fact, I might just remove it because uh, there might be some shorts under there. So I'm actually going to put a little bit of uh, flux all over it. I mean, it's easier to just remove things than to, than to try to troubleshoot them, you know? I mean, come on. So I'm just gonna get rid of this cap too. I mean, this is these are all camera caps, so I don't I don't need any of this. I think when you're doing data recovery, I think you have to give up on the fact that you're gonna get this phone to work. You know, I mean, especially, I mean, there are certain instances where you could say, okay, you know, we let's let's uh, you know, let's see if we can get the phone to work. In addition to recovering the data, you know, the the, the customer will be especially happy, you know. But I think in this instance, instance, I just don't. It may be possible, but. I mean, you're probably looking at, you know, double, tripling the time that it's going to take to, to, to get data off, you know, if you try to, if you go in with mindset that you're going to fix it. So, I would say just don't even bother, you know, I mean. This thing is not heating very well. I was at the same temperature earlier and it was it was going nice and now it's just like crap. It's like not even melting the solder. This is a quick eight six eight sixty one DW. Like like that's the bottom part of the LDO, so that shouldn't even be there anymore. I guess I might just have to take it up. Take the heat up a notch. Don't even worry about it, man. If you're worried about jacking this up, then you're you're not. You should be more concerned about the data, which is our objective here. The data. Yep. 
Let's get this sucker out of the way. Come on, LDO. Now, I guess I don't really have to remove this LDO, but I'd like to get it off. All right, let's turn heat up a little bit. I swear I was at same temperature earlier, and it was just going nice. Finally, okay. Alright, we're done. With the top part at least. So I'm just going to clean this sucker up here. So, let's get rid of some of the corrosion. Let's put a little flux on it and tin them. Just so that I want to make sure there's no corrosion left on this thing and I don't, no possibility of shorts. Or turning into black shit. Okay, I think that's all we really care about, so. Get rid of the black tar. Make sure there's no other shorts on any of the main power lines there. Like BCC main. Okay, so that's pretty good. Uh, let's just probe around a little bit, make sure we have any shorts. Okay, I don't think that's ground, actually. Yeah, that's ground. I think those are supposed to be ground, so we're good. Alright, so I'm pretty content with that. Um, so let's flip to the other side and work on Chestnut now. Make sure we relieve that uh, PP5V7 short. So I'm just going to cover the Wi-Fi chip, even though we don't really need it for data recovery, but and uh just put a little flux on it and uh get rid of this uh chestnut real quick I'd venture to guess that the short's probably under chestnut
Okay, that's not pretty. And you could probably just take away some of these caps, but uh But I like just leaving them intact. Pretty sure we don't need these to boot, but I'm not positive. Pretty sure I'm pretty certain. They could also be shorted, but I mean let's just take a look at it right now. With my shitty head holder, which is probably gonna fall. Look at that. Look at that nastiness. Does that does that look alright to you? Does that look alright to you? That crust. So let's just Q tip it first. And then we will put the solder on it. Okay, so I've gotten most of the corrosion away. It's not great, but it's okay. So make sure there's no shorts on any of these caps here that I just kind of took off and put back on. Okay, and then a little bit of corrosion there. And I think we're looking pretty good. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So let's just check for let's just see if those caps are still short or not. And uh, I, I'm hoping it's probably let's see it's not well. I think we're good. I think that's supposed to be low resistance, so I'm not 100 percent sure. And then, okay, so let's just do diode mode for these pads real quick before we put it back on. Otherwise, we might have to redo it. You know, so I might as well just check it right now. So I'm just gonna probe it you know red on ground and then black on on each pin here and just let's see what we get ol ol short ol 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 0.35 short ol 0 0.66, 0 0.35, short, short, 0 0.37, 0 0.38, 0 0.35, OL, 
Oh well. Oh well. 0.54. Okay, so let's just take a look now. That's definitely not supposed to be OL, so something's not right there. Let's see, make sure I have this the right way. Actually, maybe it is supposed to be OL, because that's the PP5E7 Mason. Yeah, I guess you're right. I think it is supposed to be OL because the screen is actually, the screen would actually be, uh, would complete the circuit, I believe. Okay. So let's check inside, middle, point, point 0.55. Okay, so that's good. That's LCM, the chestnut enable. That's, that's perfect. So let's just make sure these two data lines are there. And it'll be these two. 0 0.58, 0 0.38, okay, that's perfect. VCC main. Okay, VCC main is there. And then, okay, so this, this I, we should definitely get a reading on that one. And let's check it. These two. This is OL. Actually, hold on. Is this supposed to be? Actually, the chip provides the power. So this is the output. So maybe they are. I think they are supposed to be OL. So those are outputs. They're supposed to be OL unless the chip's on. Okay, so that's fine. So let's just go ahead and put. Uh, you know what? Before we even do this, let's uh, reboot. Let's let's plug it in. See what happens. Okay, so plug this. I'm just gonna plug it into the to a housing here, and uh, known good battery. And I'll plug it into my ammeter. Let's see if it draws anything. If it goes, if it draws like the one or whatever. Okay, 0.44. Oh, 1.43. Okay, that's not bad. So I suspect that it looks like it's good actually. It looks like it's charging now. There you go. Just rebooted. Okay, perfect. I think it's good. So let's just uh, let's put let's put um, chestnut on. You know what? I'm, I'm gonna plug it into my uh, into the iTunes here. See if iTunes recognizes it. Okay. So it should be booting now. All right. It is. Uh, I just heard a sound that um, iTunes makes when it detects the phone. So. It is detecting the phone and it says device driver installed. Nothing is getting hot. And it says, okay, so we are looking good. So I'm going to go ahead and put Chestnut on and hopefully, I think this is going to work. So, all right, let's put Chestnut back on and then I think we're good to go after we put Chestnut back on. So it looks like I still got some corroded pads under here, so I'm gonna see if I can get this working. Yeah, just get a little bit of tin on them. Okay. You want a little bit of shine on every pad. Okay. Some of the ground pads are going to be a little bit stubborn to get uh, solder off. You don't want it too big. Guessing that that's probably a, a ground pad right there.
Okay, I think that's good. You can also blast it with a little bit of a blast it with a little bit of heat too. Shine it up a little bit. Can shine up the pads a little bit. There you go. That'll make when I when I actually put chestnut on, it'll make it a little bit easier. And, and it's warmed up now, so so I don't. I'm like all out of chestnut, so I'm actually gonna. This is a reballed chip that I just took from a donut board and reballed it, and let's just make sure we got the orientation right. Uh, A1 is that one closer. Closest to the PMIC, so so uh, it's got to be this way, I think. Let me just double check. Okay, yep, that's it. So let's put a little flux on it. Right. And let's heat. I don't want to come this far and and have my Wi-Fi chip have a short under my Wi-Fi chip. So, so I'm just gonna do this. Make sure this is over a little bit. Uh, just a little bit over. Okay, I think that's good. So let's just heat it slowly, and it should melt into place. And it should set. Once it sets, you should be able to see it. There it goes. Part of it. That's all of it, right there. Looks pretty good. I'll just leave it just for an extra second or two. There it goes. We're we're in business, I think. So. That is good to go. Let's clean the clean the flux off a little bit. So let's just check for a short just for the hell of it because we don't want this thing to blow up because of a bad placement or something. I think we're good. Okay, I think we're good. Uh, let's just check VCC main real quick as well. Okay, we good. So let's power this puppy up, and I'm pretty sure. Well, I don't know if the backlight's gonna work because there's a missing uh, diode. So we may have to do some with the. May have to do some with that diode too. I'm not sure if the backlight works without it or not. All right, as you can see, the backlight is out, but we can see the Apple logo. So this is this is just enough backlight that we're gonna be able to access this puppy and get the data off. So I'm not even gonna fix the backlight. I mean, it's really kind of pointless because um, I can see it, everything right here. Touch works perfectly. Uh, trust. First thing I'm gonna do is uh, okay. There's no passcode, so yeah, I've already trusted it. So let's go over to and it's coming up. 
so we are in business um, we're in business all right I'm gonna click on this I actually don't want really want to show the name too much so anyways so this one's good to go uh, that's, that's how you fix that's how you recover data off of an iPhone 6s all right thanks for watching